Hello everyone, this is Homer White again with the first part of chapter three of our course. This focuses on research questions that deal with the relationship between two-factor variables. So for the whole chapter, we'll be looking at how to detect and describe relationships between two-factor variables, just going a bit more in depth on the same topic than we did in chapter two. We're also going to look at a new aspect of that type of research question, the inferential aspect of the question, as opposed to just the descriptive work that we were doing back in Chapter 2. We'll also introduce a formalized way of addressing inference. It's the chi-square test for relationship between two-factor variables. And lastly in the chapter, we'll address a strange and interesting phenomenon known as Simpson's paradox. So in this video lecture, we will learn more about conditional distributions, and we will use conditional distributions to detect relationships. And then I'll offer you some advice on how to describe relationships well once you've detected them. Always remember to make sure that the necessary packages are loaded. So let's get on to conditional distributions. We'll work with the Math 111 survey data again as an example so you may want to run these commands and re-familiarize yourself with the data if you have not thought about it in a few days. We'll pick a research question out of that data. What's the relationship between sex and how one feels about one's weight? There are really two aspects to any research question that we ask. One of them we're familiar with already from Chapter 2. It's the descriptive aspect. And we're asking ourselves, is there a relationship between these two variables in the sample data that we have available? But there's another aspect to the question. And in this case, the aspect, the inferential aspect, comes out this way. Does the relationship in the sample, assuming that we see one, provide strong evidence for a similar relationship in the population from which the sample was drawn? Another way of putting it is, is the relationship that we see in the sample real? Is it there because it reflects a relationship in the population? Or could it just be due to chance variation in the random process by which the data came to us in the first place? So we'll address both aspects in this chapter, but we're going to focus on the descriptive aspect only in this particular video lecture. So again, reprising chapter two somewhat. We know that since both sex and how you feel about your weight are factor variables, that the right way to investigate the research question descriptively is with a two-way table. And so we see again the xtabs function, which is how we construct a two-way table. And we're constructing a two-way table for the relationship between sex, which we think of as the explanatory variable this time. So we put it first in the formula. And then the variable weight feel as the response variable. The x tabs makes the two-way table. And just in case we need to use the table for a variety of things, we store it in an object with a good name. And I decided to give it the name sex weight. And then in the next line, we're simply asking to print out the object sex weight, and we see that object here. So a two-way table is called a two-way table because it has two dimensions. The rows are one dimension, and the columns are another dimension. In addition to dimensions, a two-way table has cells, and the number of cells is determined by how many rows and how many columns there are. This particular two-way table has two rows because the variable sex has two values. And it has three columns because the variable weight feel has three values. Feel underweight, feel okay about your weight, feel overweight. Two times three is six, and so there's six cells, and these are the six numbers that you see in the two-way table here. Now, when you look at a two-way table, often you want to think about the totals of the rows and the totals of the columns. Those are shown here, and 
These totals are what we call margins. They're not really part of the two-way table. They're not part of the six cells that make up the table. But they have some importance because they help you to describe each factor variable individually. So for example, if we were to focus on those row totals and write them out here, we see that there was a total of 40 females and 31 males. That was the tally for the variable sex. If we were to take percentages for that, then we get the familiar distribution for sex. Because this is occurring in the context of a two-way table, we call it the marginal distribution of sex because the numbers that were used to make those percents appeared on one of the margins of the table. They appeared in this vertical margin here. The other marginal distribution comes from the totals for weight feel. And those totals were on the bottom of the table. Nine total people felt underweight, 25 people felt okay about their weight, and 37 people felt overweight. If you make some percentages out of those totals, then you get the marginal distribution of weight feel. An important thing to know about the marginal distributions is that they don't tell you anything about how the two variables are related. Studying them alone, one by one, doesn't really get you started on the research question at all. That's why those conditional distributions are so important. They're the key to research questions involving the relationship between two factor variables. Remember that row percents are a way to find some conditional distributions. So if we take row percents of the table sex weight, we get the output that you see. Each row of this table gives you a conditional distribution. Let's examine these rows one at a time. The conditional distribution of weight feel, given that sex is female, is the first row in the row percents, the row that goes along with the females. This is where we learn that out of all the females, 2.5% of them consider themselves to be underweight, 27.5% of them think that they're okay with their weight, and 70% of females in the sample think that they're overweight. The second row in the row percents, the one that goes next to the male value, is the conditional distribution of weight feel given that sex is male. And so we learn that out of the 31 males in the sample, 25.81% of them thought of themselves as underweight, 45% or so felt okay about their weight, and about 29% thought that they were overweight. There were two values for the variable sex, and therefore two condi conditional distributions of the other variable weight feel given the possible two values for the variable sex. So, how does this help us to detect relationships between two factor variables? The principle for detecting these relationships is really very simple. If the conditional distributions are different, then the two variables are related. Now, how do you tell if conditional distributions are different? What you do is you compare those row percents down a column. And if those row percents differ, the variables are related. If in any single column the, the row percents differ, the variables are related. All you have to find is one column where the row percents differ, and then you'll know that the two variables are related. So let's try it out with this example. Let's make a comparison down a column for one of these rows. I decided to pick the over column, the overweight column. And when you go down the row, sure enough, when you go down this column, sure enough, you see a difference. 70% of the females think that they're overweight, and only 29% of the males thought that they were overweight. There you go. That's a difference. The two variables are related. I'd like to give you some tips now for describing any relationships that you might find between two, between two factor variables. 
So to recap, just to start from the beginning to make sure we know what to do, when you're investigating the relationship between two factor variables, you begin by using the crosstabs function to make a two-way table. It's usually a good idea to save that table in an object somewhere, and then take its row percents. The row percents are shown at the bottom of the page, and you choose a column with which to make comparisons. You can choose any column that you like. But I advise you to focus on a column where you see a big difference in the percentages. And preferably, if at all possible, focus on a column where those percentages are also based on some of the larger counts that you see in the two-way table. So in the sex weight table, I chose the overweight column partly because I saw a big difference in the column percentages, 70% versus 29%, but also because the numbers involved were fairly large. If you look at the underweight column, there's another big difference in percentages, 2% for the women, 25% for the men, but that 2.5% is based on only one woman out of the 40. When the counts are low like that, then there's a lot of variability in the percentages. And this increases the likelihood that the difference you see could just be due to chance variation in the process of collecting the data. Remember that our sample is a random sample from the population of Georgetown College students. We'll learn a lot more about how chance variation works in sampling, but the general idea is that the larger amount of data your percentages are based on, the less variability there'll be, the more sure you can be that differences that you see in the percentages might be due to something more than just how this particular sample came out. So a good description for the relationship, once you've chosen your column, is to then talk about the relationship, but back it up with specific relevant features of the two-way table. In particular, Pick some of the percentages that you had when you went down the column, some of the percentages that differed in a big way, and mention them specifically in a way that makes it clear to people what kind of percentages they are. So this description says the females in the sample are more likely than the males to think that they are overweight. And here's the backup. 70% of females think they're overweight as compared to only 29% of the males. Notice the way we've worded it. We've made it very clear to the reader that we're dealing with row percentages. 70% of females think they are overweight. That's a row percent because it focuses your mind on all the females and then pulls out that percentage of them that think that they are overweight. Similarly, we've made it clear that we're talking about a row, percentages, a row percentage of males and we're comparing the two and finding a big difference. So we backed up the idea that the two conditional distributions of weight feel given sex are really different so that the two variables are related. Let me warn you about a mistaken way to describe a relationship between two factor variables. Let's again take the row percentages what if we were to say something like this? The females in the sample are more likely to think they are overweight. 70% of females think they're overweight. Only 2.5% think that they are underweight. Now, this is a completely true statement, but it's not a statement in any way about the relationship between sex and weight feel. The reason is that it deals only with percentages that occur in one row. Essentially, you're comparing two row percentages across a, you're, you're comparing two row percentages across a row. In the process, you're only learning about one of the conditional distributions, the conditional distribution of weight feel given that sex is female. You haven't learned anything that says whether that conditional distribution differs from the conditional distribution of weight feel given that sex is male. If you haven't shown the two conditional distributions are different, you haven't shown there's a relationship at all. 
So make sure that when you're dealing with a, with a table of row percents, that you compare row percents down a column. Don't compare row percents across a row. Here's another mistaken way to try to describe a distribution. It's a hypothetical example. Suppose that you were doing a study to see which of two different types of soil was more likely to make plants sprout. And you had a hundred plants, or a hundred seeds I should say, that you put into plot A, and 200 seeds that you put into plot B. And then you just wait and see which seeds sprout. And suppose you find what's revealed in this two-way table here, that of the 100 plants in plot A, 70 sprouted, and of the 200 plants in plot B, 140 sprouted. You could make row percents for this to try to see if there's some relationship between type of soil and whether or not a plant sprouts. Now suppose that someone were to try to answer that relationship question as follows. Type of plot and sprouting are related. In both types of plot, a majority of the seeds, 70%, sprouted. Now it's completely true that in both types of plot, 70% of the seeds sprouted. But that does not at all indicate that there's a relationship between the variables type of plot and sprouting. In fact, it's evidence for the lack of a relationship. When you go down the sprouted column, you see that the row percents are exactly the same. That's an indication of no relationship. When you go down the other possible column, again you see that the row percentages are exactly the same. If you go down all the columns and find that the row percentages are the same when you go down the column, then the two conditional distributions are the same, and therefore the two variables are not related. Relationship between two variables does not mean that, their condition, that the conditional distributions are similar. It means that the conditional distributions are different. For two variables to be related, changing the value of one variable should make a difference in how the other variable comes out. That's reflected in conditional distributions being different. Thank you for listening.